It's much easier also to saute broccoli and Brussels sprouts when it's cut like that because there's more direct, I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sandy, and I'm gonna be making orichetti with broccoli and Brussels. Think of this as a fresh take on your typical pasta night. This pasta dish is so great to load up on tons of fresh vegetables because of all the flavorful ingredients like lemon, garlic, parsley, and Parmesan. Actually, I was inspired by a classic Italian dish called aglio and olio, which just means garlic and olive oil, which everybody loves. So I'm just gonna start by slicing these really huge pieces of garlic right here. So easy, get these sliced up really thin. I like using sliced garlic in this recipe because you still get a really garlic infused dish, but then you get some nice like bites of the garlic too. And the garlic will cook, so it'll mellow out and it won't be like raw garlic. Now you can also use pressed garlic in this recipe too, but pressed garlic, when you're cooking it or sauteing it, it cooks really, really fast and it can burn pretty quickly. So now I have a bunch of broccoli and Brussels sprouts. This is so great and it's so easy to get these all nice and sliced up. I already trimmed down my Brussels sprouts. So what you wanna do is go ahead and trim off that root end. And right when you trim that off, some of these outer leaves are just gonna naturally fall off and you want these to fall off because these can be kind of bruised and maybe carry a little bit more dirt. So this looks good. Those are all cleaned up. I'm gonna start, I'll start with the Brussels sprouts. I love slicing them thinly like this. You get lots of surface area for them to brown and cook really nicely in the pan. I find that even some people who hate Brussels sprouts, when you slice them and saute them up with garlic and olive oil, they magically like Brussels sprouts. Now I have my broccoli and I also saved my stems. So I'm gonna show you how you can chop these up too. Okay, so now I have the stems of the broccoli. I'm just gonna cut these down a little bit. Now when you eat broccoli stems, you can peel them because this outer layer can be a little tough, um, especially when you're just eating them raw or in a salad. But because I'm cooking them long enough, I'm not gonna peel mine. You want all your vegetables to be about the same size because then they're gonna cook more evenly. And it's not very pleasant to bite into like one big chunk of broccoli and then a skinny slice of Brussels sprouts. Look at that. Just nice little slices of broccoli stems. All right, so my vegetables are done. We'll get ready to heat the pan up. Okay, so I have a quarter cup of oil heating in my skillet. Now that might sound like a lot of oil, but this olive oil is gonna help really make the sauce of this dish. So that is getting pretty hot and I'm gonna start by heating up and sauteing my garlic slices with some crushed red pepper flakes. Now I have a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes in here, but by toasting these, Earlier in the process, like before I add all the vegetables, it's gonna really help release their oils and infuse some really nice flavor into the dish. I think I'm ready to go ahead and add my garlic slices. You wanna keep a nice close look whenever you're sauteing sliced garlic or pressed garlic so that it does not burn. I'm gonna add my red pepper flakes. Now you can see my garlic is already getting brown, so this happens pretty fast maybe in about a minute, maybe less. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add my vegetables. Whoa, can you guys hear that sizzle? Now this is when you know your pan is nice and hot. It's really important to have a nice and hot pan when you're trying to get a sear on these vegetables. Just adding a half a teaspoon of salt, so adding salt to this dish is not only gonna flavor it, but it's also gonna help those vegetables release some of their moisture so that they get that nice browning and sear. So I wanna get these nice and coated in the olive oil and garlic and red pepper flake mixture. But then after I feel like they're well tossed, I'm gonna kind of leave them alone and come back and stir occasionally. And that way they'll have time to get nice browning. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and grate my cheese. I've got an ounce of fresh Parmesan cheese. 
All right, my vegetables are getting pretty close to being done, so I have a cup of frozen green peas I'm gonna add to the dish. I love adding frozen green peas. You wanna make sure you add them towards the end of cooking so that they don't get too soggy. So I have my cheese and I'm just gonna go ahead and zest my lemon. So in this recipe, you add lemon juice and lemon zest to get like major lemon flavor in here. You always wanna zest your lemon before you juice it. It's a lot easier that way. All right, so I am ready to add my pasta back into the vegetables and get it all mixed in together. I got my orichetti noodles. I really like the short noodles in this recipe because then everything is sort of the same bite-sized pieces. And then I reserve just about a quarter cup of the pasta water. So you always wanna make sure you salt your pasta water really, really well to give it great flavor. And then if you reserve some of it and add it to your sauce, it's the starchy water is gonna help thicken up your pasta sauce and kind of make it so everything coats the pasta a little bit better. Get that all mixed in. So I just took off the heat. This pan is really hot, so this is all gonna stay nice and warm, but everything is really done cooking at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and add Parmesan first. I'm gonna get this all mixed in. I love Parmesan because it's got that slightly salty taste to it. So you don't need to add a lot of extra salt in your recipes. We're a Parmesan kind of family over here. So we always have a lot of fresh parm on hand. Okay, then I'm gonna add half a lemon juice on here. Now, if you wanted to make this recipe ahead of time, you could go ahead and cook it to this point and save it. And then at the end, add your lemon zest and your fresh parsley. Cause those are really like your finishing touches. So I got half a cup of parsley. This recipe would also be great with grilled shrimp or maybe some chicken. You could also do chickpeas for a vegetarian add too. But I think it's great just like this. You could serve it for Meatless Monday for something different. So there you have it, a fresh vegetable packed recipe with tons of flavor. And this recipe came together so quickly in all in one skillet. I think this is gonna be a really fun and fresh weeknight meal and I hope it becomes your next go-to.